Greetings, it's Professor S. And in this video, I want to take the next five minutes or so to talk about the tertiary structure of proteins. That's the third level of protein structure after the primary structure, the unique sequence of amino acids in the polypeptide, and the secondary structure, folding of the primary structure held together by hydrogen bonds associated with the backbone. You may recognize the alpha helix to my left as an example of secondary structure, and it should come as no surprise we're going to keep on folding. Tertiary structure is folding of the secondary structure. Now if you've ever played around with folding paper and come on who hasn't done that at some point in their childhood or you know adulthood because some things are just cool no matter how old you are. Anyway, if you've ever played with folding paper, the more times you fold it, the more force it takes to hold the folds together. And the same thing is now going to be true here at the tertiary level. We need more forces involved to hold this together, and all of those forces are going to involve the side chains. Let's go take a closer look. All right, so here I have a polypeptide sequence. This is not an actual protein. I'm not basing this on any real molecule. I just strung together some amino acids in particular positions to make a particular point. But what I'm gonna do with this structure right here is I'm going to fold it, but I'm gonna fold it based on forces involving attractions with the side chains, starting with what we might call hydrogen bond-based forces. Uh, so first off, this molecule is essentially going to fold downward as such. And the reason it's going to fold this way is because we have three types of interactions. We have hydrogen bonds formed between polar side chains and water around the molecule. Uh, in other cases, we have hydrogen bonds forming between one polar side chain and another. And then in this other area, we have a group of nonpolar side chains that are clustering together. They can't hydrogen bond with water, they can't hydrogen bond with any of the polar side chains, and so instead they are excluded. It's called hydrophobic exclusion, where they cluster together to get away from the water. This particular folding pattern could be produced, at least two dimensionally, by simply hydrogen bond interactions involving the side chains. Let's Go back to starting position. Now three of those polar side chains are also acidic or basic. And so I want to take two of them and ionize them. Acidic side chains take on a negative charge. Alkaline side chains take on a positive charge. These two side chains that are positive and negative could form an ionic bond with each other. And so we're going to get this kind of upward buckle that could form in this chain and be held together by that ionic bond. That ionic bond, which is stronger than a hydrogen bond, more stable than a hydrogen bond, uh, which could be combined with the hydrogen bond folding to give us a unique shape. Well, let's take this back to our resting shape and go one more. Two of the amino acids in this are cysteine. They're noticeable for their little yellow balls. They contain sulfhydryl groups. Well, those two sulfhydryl groups can combine to form a very strong covalent bond called a disulfide bridge. And so we can get a really sharp hairpin loop in this protein by folding it and then using that disulfide bridge to hold it together. The tertiary structure is going to involve folding of the secondary structure that involves three different types of forces. Hydrogen bond based forces, ionic bonds, and covalent bonds, all of them working around those side chains. Now it's important to mention Folding in the tertiary structure isn't just folding for its own sake, and it's not a single bend here or a kink there. It is taking that entire hundreds of amino acids long polypeptide sequence and folding it into a unique form, a unique form something like this. We typically talk about the tertiary structure of a protein as having a globular or very often a fibrous form depending on how the polypeptide is folded upon itself, but this is a unique structure. And in this particular case, the unique structure we're looking at is my humble rendering of what's called beta hemoglobin. And we will continue looking at beta hemoglobin and the structure of proteins as we expand beyond tertiary structure, but that'll be another five minutes from now.
Let's do this. No. Why not? I know what you did that one time. What do you mean? Where you made my voice really, really high in post-production. Wasn't cool, man. I don't know what you're talking about. You don't, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. You made my voice really, really high pitched so it sounded like I was sucking helium. You better not do that this time. No, we're not gonna do that again. Well, you can make my voice really, really deep this time. No, we're not gonna make your voice deeper. Swear. I swear. Swear what? I swear I won't make your voice higher or deeper. Fine. Hey, this is Professor S. If you enjoyed that video, here are a couple more you might also enjoy. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in another five minutes. Good.